Well, praise the Lord. I, I know I just made a video warning. But being that this, they're having a march in Washington about the abortion debate. Well, all of a sudden, I had not, you know, paid much attention to Obama's birth. But the Lord told me to get up, come in here, and look this up. And this is what I found. Let me see. Uh, because, you, you know, um, Obama's mother could have chose to do to him what he okays. I'm going to, I'll put a link to this. This is from uh, the, um, let me see, what am I reading from? The Free Encyclopedia. Okay. I like that. Anyway, <clears throat> what it says, and it's talking about Obama's mother and how she was born in Kansas. Uh, her parents were born in Kansas, met in Wichita, and that's how Obama's mother come to be o Obama's mother. She was born. So, it goes on down and it, you can read it, everything about him and, and everything that come about. <clears throat> But this is what I found very interesting that the Father was trying to point out to me, okay? Um, it says, on August the 4th, 1961, at the age of 18, uh, Drumham gave birth to her first son, Barack Obama. That was back in, wow, 1961. Just a year older than my son, because my son was born in 1962. Hmm. Well, praise the Lord. But, <clears throat> now I'm going to jump back up. Um, at the age of 23, Obama Sr., this is Obama's daddy, had come to Hawaii to pursue his education, leaving behind a pregnant wife hmm, and infant son in his hometown of Nigeria, Kenya. Dunning, Dunningham and Obama Sr. was married on the Hawaiian island of Maya, M-A-U-I-A, -A, on February the 2nd, 1962. Okay. They were married February the 2nd of 1962, despite opposition from both families. Dunningham was three months pregnant. Now that's the point. And after this, Obama Sr. eventually informed her about his first marriage in Kenya, but claimed he was divorced. And years later, she had discovered this was false. So in a way, he wasn't, they weren't married. I mean, he had a wife and kid already. But this is what I want to point out to you, Obama. She was three months pregnant with you before she even married, or thought she was marrying your daddy. In Hawaii. Hmm. How many babies are aborted because their mothers, the mothers are single and get pregnant before wedlock? Now, <clears throat> back in those days, abortion wasn't really as it is today. But headed that way, 
there were many people getting rid of their kids if they didn't want them back in those days. So she could have found a way. Um, she could have went overseas and aborted you. Uh, being that her parents and your dad's parents was not in favor of them two being together. I don't know whether it was because she was white and he was black or whatever. Or maybe it was because his parents didn't think it was appropriate for her him to marry her when he was still married to another woman overseas. But when you advocate abortion, killing of innocent children, taking of innocent blood, do you know how close you missed the bullet? I mean, really. Your mama could have got rid of you. Uh, according to you, she had all legal reason over her body to do away with you. One, she was young. She was not married when she got pregnant with you. And by reasoning and standards of nowadays thinking she could have got you aborted and it would have been just fine and then we wouldn't have had a president you know a black president black and white you know there's there's a little deal in there you're half white half black because your mama's white your daddy's black you're a manlada that's what they call them. But yet you advocate for children to be aborted before they're born. Whereas your mother could have done this. God led me to this. Because I didn't realize that. I didn't realize it at all. And it had to be God telling me this. Because see, he knows your past and he knows your present. And he, will know, he does know your future, Obama. How many babies that are aborted could have been president like you? Think about it. Now, you probably never listened to this, and nobody will probably ever get this to you. But you know what? You're privileged. You're privileged. You are. Because many women that get pregnant out of wedlock and they have this they have this overwhelming uh, of parents not wanting this you know this thing to happen how many girls goes out and gets abortions just because they don't want their parents to know because of the same prejudice your grandparents on both sides had against your mother and daddy being together. Why weren't you aborted? Because she chose not to. And by her choosing not to have the convenience of getting rid of you, you were born and now you are president. But yet, you stand for abortion and condemn these innocent lives to be destroyed. And their blood cries out on the land because you're, you, you could have been there yourself. If your mother had chose to abort you, your blood would have been in the land crying for vengeance. Just the same as the babies that are crying now. Their blood is crying from the ground, just like Abel saying, avenge us, avenge us, when will you avenge us? And yet you stand for abortion? And you wonder why the harbingers, the curses, the judgments of God is coming upon America. And I'm telling you, Obama, sometime this year or next year, you're going to see a storm that comes in and do great damage 
to even the Capitol building. Because God is ticked off. He really is. He is hearing every one of those innocent bloods crying out. You know, he's hearing them. Yep, I hear you, Johnny. I hear you, Sally. I hear you, Susie, Alice, Maria, Tim, Jose. I hear you. See, he's already named them. He knows our name before we're ever born. So he, he knows their name. And when he hears that blood crying out from the land, he knows their name and he calls them out. Jennifer. Maria. Mary. I hear you crying. I hear your blood crying from the land as I hear Abel's blood cried from the land. And I will show vengeance for you. I will come upon America. And for every child you have slain, I will hold you, America, accountable for 50 or more million innocent lies being shed and poured out on the ground. That blood is now crying out your name. Harry, Jonathan, Susan, Sue, Josephine, it seems like the Maria one is really crying out today, avenge me, avenge me, what I could have been what I could have done, they stopped it before I was able to enter in and do anything with a life that I could have helped many others. And yes, there's some out there that would have destroyed lives. Good and evil is born. I mean, we're all really born in sin. So I can't say really good, but there are people that would have grew up and become good and done great things for America. But America, you killed them. You killed them. You killed the scientists that could have invented things that would have stopped cancer. Maybe even stopped AIDS or helped in a flu virus. You killed them. The people that could have brought comfort, you killed. And now you have pain. Obama. When you stood there and said and upheld the, the rights of abortion, of taking innocent lives, you condemned yourself and condemned America more and more. Parent, plan, parent, this thing with the, the parenthood planning or whatever kills more babies, takes more lives than any organization in this world. Innocent lies. Parent planning hood. Plan what? Anyway, I can't think of it right now totally. But anyway, you people know what I'm talking about. You have killed our children. Ever since that law passed, Roe versus Wade. When we lowered ourselves to the point of making a law saying good is evil and evil is good, and that day you said evil, the taking of innocent lives is good, we shall pass a law saying it's good. We will set up abortion clinics and take taxpayers' money to a 
afford for these buildings and these doctors to come in and kill, kill innocent children, innocent living human beings. You kill them and their blood is crying out on America because it become the law of the land and when it become the law of the land the curse fell smack dab on America that's the reason why the towers went down and that's the reason why in 2001 in the spring I heard the trumpet sound I heard a trumpet sound it sounded long and it waxed long. I mean, it, it was loud and it waxed long. And it shook this trailer house so bad. It shook it. My husband felt the shaking, but he didn't hear the trumpet. And when I saw the vortex swirling in the air and it was opening up, something was coming through. I have now realized what that was. It was the harbinger being set loose on America. Judgment. A harbinger of judgment. And in that fall, 9-11, the towers came down. The covering had been taken off. When that trumpet, I heard it very loud. And I saw that vortex. And I knew something was coming through. I thought it, maybe it was Jesus coming because I didn't believe in the rapture at all at that time. But I have come to determine and come to know that what I was seeing in that vortex that was whirling, that a harbinger was being let loose in the spring of 2001 and it would erupt right over New York when the towers come down the judgments begin the judgment of your sin of America begin that day that day it begin And woe unto America, it's not going to end. There's more judgments coming. Because you keep saying what is evil is good. Do it. Kill those babies. They're not nothing. They're not alive. They're not human. They're not... Come on. You cannot convince me something that's not alive and not human can grow. It takes life to grow. So it's a living. It is a living human being growing in a mother's womb. It's alive. It's alive or it would not grow. Anything that is dead, 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 will not grow. I know you people have had relatives die and you buried them in the ground. Have they come back? No, they're dead. Them bodies are dead. The spirit person has went on, left that body. It's no, it's no longer alive. It's dead. It's laying in a coffin, in the ground, six feet in the ground. It's dead. It's not going to come back to life until Jesus comes back to earth. But right now, it's not going to come back to life. So if that baby inside that wound was not alive, then there would be no baby come out. And when that baby comes out, it had been alive from the very beginning. That's what it took life to make it into the baby that is birthed out of the mother's womb. And Obama, your mama, your mama could have done that to you. She had good reasons. She was pregnant for three months at least before she married your dad. And in the long run, she really didn't marry your dad because your dad was already married, had children over at Guyana, and didn't have a divorce.
Obama, you're under judgment because you're the president. You're the leader. And God granted you to be born by softening your mother's heart to go ahead and carry you. Why? Because you were supposed to be president at this time and date. But are you changing anything for the good? No. You're making everything worse. You say, it's okay to kill your babies before they're born because they're nothing. Why didn't your mama do that? Uh, it's okay for homosexuals to get married. Which totally against a, a God's ordinance. Now you want to rip apart our Constitution of the United States and the first thing you go after is a gun to disarm the citizens of the United States the next thing you will come after freedom of speech because freedom of speech can cause a lot of trouble I'm talking to you you know people like me you will want to shut me up and other people I know that but you know what? I'm in the ark. You know, Noah built an ark. And all the animals. And I, w I want you to understand about Noah. He built an ark. And all the time he was building an ark, took him around 100 years, I guess, to build. And once all the animals were in, tucked away, once him and his family was all into the ark, tucked away, snug and safe for seven days that door stayed open it was there sort of like the ten virgins you know for seven days that door of that ark stayed open the seventh day God himself closed the door of the ark when he closed it, he sealed it. And when the waters come down from the sky and the waters come up from beneath and, and, and the people was running and they ran to the ark and they was pounding on the door saying, Moses, Noah, let us in. Let us in, Noah. Noah, please let us in. He couldn't have if he wanted to because God has sealed the door. We have time right now to go into our ark, our hiding place. That is Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Hamashiach. The door is open. It is open, people. You can come in to safety. But once that door is closed, the people have come in that is going to go in, and the door is closed and it's shut and sealed, when all of this stuff starts coming down, like the foolish virgins, they ran and beat on the door, just like the people that was in the flood beat upon the door of that ark and said, Noah, Noah, let us in. They'll be saying, Jesus, Jesus, let us in. The door won't be open. Just like when the flood waters come, and destroyed all living things upon the earth at that time. And when the fire comes and covers the land, destroying and cleaning, and the judgment is on this land, you can't come in because the door is closed. Now is the time. And judgment is upon America. It started in 2001. I heard the trumpet of judgment. I seen the vortex opening. I didn't see what come out. But I seen the vortex open. And when I was talking to my husband and I turned back because I called him. I said, Jesus is coming. You know, get prayer. And he thought I went crazy. And I looked at him and I was telling him what I heard. And then I looked back and, the door, and it was whatever had come down, it come down. And that portal was closed again. But we seen what come down in 2001, 
that harbinger that come out of that vortex in the spring of 2001 was the same one that was upon those men and and they come into the towers and great destruction come that curse and many more you have that one you have when New Orleans was almost totally wiped out now and there's other things that's happened throughout but now Sandy there are going to be greater 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 judgments greater and more powerful and more devastating coming upon America for every life that has been shed every innocent life that has been shed before they were able to be born judgment is upon America judgment is now here it started in 2001. Judgment.